What's up, my friends in the Innerverse? Welcome to the One Within All. Dear people, today I'm pretty excited for this conversation that's coming up because it's about my birthday. It's not really my birthday, but we're going to be talking about my birthday, at least in the plus extension, because my guest for today is an accomplished astrologer and she's got my birth chart in front of her. And I'm very interested to find out what was going on upstairs at the time I entered this dimension. But it's not all about me in this episode. For the first hour, we'll be talking to our guest, Desiree Fultz who is an artist of all trades and psychic entertainer about astrology, divination arts, and just what the heck real magic actually is. And when I first met Desiree, she showed me an amazing psychic experience that defied logic and stretched probability. So I have no doubt she's gonna blow our minds today. She'll also be telling us about her upcoming event, The Gathering Mountain, a festival of magic and lore, which is being held at the farm near Eureka Springs, Arkansas which some of you might know is one of my favorite places on earth. It's happening on September the 14th through the 16th. I've personally experienced so much spontaneous magic and synchronicity on that land. So I expect a conscious convergence of creative minds that will easily evolve into a vent of enlightening energy. As the great philosopher Carl Jung stated, the starry vault of heaven is in truth, the open book of cosmic projection in which are reflected the mythologems, that is the archetypes. In this vision, astrology and alchemy, the two classical functionaries of the psychology of the collective unconscious, join hands. Like Jung, I tend to agree that we shouldn't look at the stars above as the cause of our lives events or as an external force that might thwart our intentions at some predestined moment of bad timing. Instead, the stars, like all divination, arts and tools are a projection of what's within us. Our own internal universe is itself a microcosm of the zodiac and the changes of consciousness that we experience is correlated in the sky for us to see and better understand our own selves. With astrological symbolism appearing to be a ubiquitous feature in all human institutions from McDonald's to Freemasonry and all forms of religion, it's no doubt been in the best interests of controllers to keep the common man believing that there's really no wisdom to be gained from looking up at the night sky. And now we've reached the point where light pollution keeps us from most nights of our lives being able to see anything out there other than the moon and maybe a couple bright things. But as we'll discover in this conversation, the stars don't seal our fate. They serve as a guidance system to unfold your chosen destiny. The chart reading I mentioned will be coming up in the second hour of the chat, so if you're a little curious about the life and times of your fearless Interverse host, make sure you've signed up for Plus. You can do so by clicking the link in the show notes to patreon.com forward slash Interverse, where by subscribing, you'll unlock the full length episode extension, find out just how accurate Desiree's reading ends up being, and a membership to Plus also gets you the archive of excellent extended episodes and plenty of other perks to boot. If you're already a subscriber, you might be interested to check the notes for links to my birth chart and solar chart on the plus version of the show because we are going to be discussing those in the extension and maybe by looking at it, it may or may not sound appealing to hear about someone else's birth chart being discussed, but maybe if you're looking at it at the same time, it might also help you with your understanding of astrological concepts because Desiree does do a great job of generally explaining these things as she goes. But for now, I can't really wait any longer to jump into this stream of consciousness conversation about divination with Desiree. So please take this moment to mentally project your own magical intention for this conversation to be uplifting, informative, and entertaining. And welcome Desiree to the show with a warm and fluffy astral body hug. Thanks for coming on the show, Des. Greetings. It's good to be here. So uh, why don't you just start by giving us a little bit about who you are, because I know there's a lot to your creative uh, uh, outlets as a person. It's not all astrology, even though that's kind of what we're promoting here is your uh, psychic entertainer trade. But yeah, tell us more about who you are. Well, I guess I could start with an astrological position in my chart that explains a lot. Um, My first house has Uranus in it. And as you know, that's the house of, of awareness, the way that you present yourself to the world and the way that others see us. And Uranus happens to rule astrology. So 
oh, finding that in my first house gives me a pretty good understanding of astrology and also a need to completely reinvent myself sometimes. Uh, from a very young age, I just needed to try everything, do everything, be everything and change myself up frequently in order to experience life fully. And those are very much traits of the Aquarian energy, that the Uranus energy of, uh, you know, evolving. It's a transcendental planet. It's an outer planet. And it's a big part of my personality because it's in the first house. So it's a big part of my awareness. Okay. So just a moment ago, we had some technology breakdowns. And it's funny because Desiree was just in the middle of explaining some transits going on in her chart that might reflect that type of thing. Right. And Uranus also being in that first house, you know, makes me very, uh, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm technology savvy, but I have a funny story sometime to tell you about how electronics are affected by Uranus. And when it's in the first house, those people tend to have more electricity in their bodies than other people do. And when I was in college, we got the first digital camera and this is back in the nineties. Those things were really expensive and state of the art. And I had so much electricity built up in my body that when I touched the camera, it killed the hard drive. It just shocked the camera to death. And they had to send it back to the manufacturers. This $5,000 camera and this Uranian energy is all built up in my body. And it just like ruined the camera. It must have been some kind of transit back then too. But anyway, so we are back and um, I could talk astrology all day. Yeah, I think I wouldn't mind getting more into what led you into astrology and what you see as a good entry point for someone that might be interested in it to do their own study? Well, I've always been interested in the occult from a very young age, but being in a really religious upbringing, you know, I had to hide my studies. And originally, you know, tarot was more of an interest to me and other forms of magic. But as uh, I looked into astrology, uh, my first experience with it was newspapers, um, magazines, those types of things. And, you know, I just never felt I never felt that those articles were accurate for me. It places me as a Capricorn, for example, in, in a lot of the tropical charts. And most people in the Western world, when they pick up a magazine article, they try to read a, a, you know, an article, it's, it's tropical in its coordinates. And I'm a sidereal astrologer, so I'm actually using a different elliptic. And um, basically the difference is tropical is, was developed by the Hellenistic, or by the Greek during the Hellenistic period about 2000 years ago. And, you know, older methods go further back. The Vedic astrologers, the, the Hindu, the Indians had developed a sidereal elliptic. So it's a lot older. Um, I think it's more accurate. And, you know, a lot of different astrologers will have different opinions. But you mentioned earlier in your in introduction that a lot of times the truth of things are hidden. That's what the word occult actually means. It means hidden. And those who have access to specific hidden information are empowered by that information because it's correct. Um, and people, you know, who are just not privy to that information kind of live their lives blind and they go about, you know, tossed in the waves. Well, the occult is really, in my studies, it's a whole bunch of different frames of reference for understanding psychology. And what is psychology other than understanding your own self and your soul? That's what psyche means. Exactly. Exactly. To know thyself as the, you know, the Delphi temple had a sign that said, know thyself above the entrance. And, you know, you literally live in your temple. You have to live in your body. Um, you got to learn to get along with yourself and know who you are. It's the people who are the most honest with themselves that really lead the most fulfilling lives. And I mean, really, if you think about how simple that is, it's simple, but honesty comes, you know, with a lot of, of, of tears sometimes <laughs> because we have to accept who we are in order to navigate this life uh, successfully. Um, and astrology is one of those ways to do that. And as I was explaining before, the tropical coordinates are 24 degrees off because the coordinates that they use are based off of the seasons, you know, Aries in, uh, at the equinoxes. But the sidereal zodiacs measurements are the sun against the backdrop of the constellation. So it's literally the sun. Where's the sun sitting right now? You know, and, and whatever the sun is in, that's the zodiac it's in. Um, the house systems are different. So without going into too much detail about the different house systems and things that people use, I did not feel that horoscopes were correct or accurate. And so I ignored them for a lot of years. But um, then I got a scholarship and actually started studying astrology more closely. And that's where I learned about the possible 24 degrees off. 
And when I reran my chart in sidereal coordinates and instead of travel goal, I'm like, I see myself. I really see myself now. There were some cross- crossovers. So you're going to get some accuracy with tropical coordinates because some things will still fall in the same houses, you know, and, and, and along the same lines, you'll see some accurate placements. But I find that when I do comparative readings, a tropical chart next to a sidereal chart, almost always that person will basically like be converted to sidereal by the end of the reading. So they're like, oh, wow, I really can see that. And so there's a hidden coordinate. I don't know that it was done on purpose, but, you know, there's just so much to take into account when you're doing astrology. It's very mathematical. There's a lot of symbols to read, a lot of information that has to come up into your mind when you see a particular placement. It's basically like how how well can your mind connect to symbols and meanings and symbols in a flash moment. And so reading astrology, you know, a lot of astrologers who get really good at it have to be able to use Uranian type energy where you have flashes of information can hit your mind really fast, intuitive moments. And so this is a gift that I've had since I was very young. It's this, this, this flashes of intuition, kind of a knowing, a claircognizance. Uh, I don't really feel things so much. You know, you have a lot of uh, people who are clairvoyant. They see, clairaudience, they hear, clairsentient, feel. Um, I'm more of a claircognizant. And when you look at my nail chart, you can see that there's a ton of planets in my third house, which is ruled by Mercury, that's air. And then I have a bunch of uh, placements in Sagittarius. So the influence that I have in, in my chart really gives my mind the capacity to see into a chart and have those flashes of intuition while at the same time being able to recall all of the layers of information learned over the years of studying astrology and applying thousands of charts that I've read and seeing patterns and how they apply to any individual, any given individual. So I would say about half of the accuracy that you get in a reading from a, from an astrologer will come from an intuitive knowing and also from just the ability to understand symbols and how cor- like energies correlate. That's pretty much the way of all divination arts, that it's really more of the intuitive side, which is why someone can pick up divination tools and actually have a meaningful learning experience right away, especially with things like tarot, because even if you don't, have a deep understanding of the symbolism, you know, of the major arcana of the tarot, for example, or the minor arcana, which I think is even a little more tricky because there's so much, so many cards there. Mm-hmm. The more you study it, the more you're going to be able, the more you study these types of systems, the more you're going to be able to remember about all of them because information stores in your memory through these links. So that's mm-hmm. why it's so helpful to have these systems that correlate with each other, like whether it's the Vedic chakra system correlating to the planetary rulers mm-hmm. and, you know, all these things are actually the sort of different ways of looking at the same thing. And I think that's what's useful about it. Having these exactly. multiple paths is that it helps us go uh, reinforce what we know about the other stuff. But then even if you don't mm-hmm. know about this stuff, just how something does make you feel and what jumps in your mind right away, that is your intuition speaking to you, even if you think you don't have it. Exactly, exactly. So really, if you think about it, whatever mode you're using, whether it be tarot or astrology, it's the mode that distracts the concrete mind. And what you have to do in any kind of divination is distract the concrete mind, get it thinking about something. So it's running a program and then the abstract mind can connect dots. So it's whatever tool you're using, whatever divination tool, it doesn't really matter. It's it's whatever you use that you're congenial with, what, what you're comfortable with something you're good at that, you know, you enjoy and it allows your abstract mind to kind of just take over and your subconscious just kicks in. So with any, any mode. It makes it very similar to art itself because you're distracting the the left brain with this mechanical repetitious motion of the brush stroke or the pencils, Mm -hmm. you know, line. And then that's when these little ideas pop in from the right brain to go, Oh, I'll decorate this like that. And before you know it, you've created something that you did not even plan at all. And it's just come through. Exactly. And, and I love it. I, and you know, it's, it's great. You've probably been around quite a few intuitives, um, you know, with this, with this program that you have and everyone works in their own special way, but ultimately it's the same. You get into state and the tools are different, but they're all, they, they achieve the same purpose. So in any kind of divination, The tool is what you use to get you into state. And I get excited about astrology. When I see a chart, I see a person. I see their potential. I see their possible pitfalls. I see someone that I can really, really like resonate with because I understand them as a human being, you know, at the very, very core level of of how they're made, how the universe made them. 
So when I got into reading astrology and seeing these charts, I realized that everyone suffers and everyone has superpowers and everyone is really awesome and very unique. There's no two chart alike. I mean, you'll, you'll see characteristics, you know, that people will have. And it's funny because when you really get into charts, you know, I'll meet people uh, at a party or something and, and they'll say something about themselves. And in my mind, I'm going, oh, I bet they have Saturn in their sixth house. And, you know, it's like I laugh about that, but I'm starting to see the world in chart form. Uh, you know, like in the matrix, they're looking at the screen drip with numbers and one of them's like, it just looks like numbers. And he's like, well, I see a blonde. I see a brunette. Mm-hmm. Looking at a chart's like that for me. I see the matrix screen and I see a blonde. I see a brunette. I see somebody who's a great speaker, somebody who might have relationship problems. You know, I see things that will come into a person's life or possibly come into their life. And there's usually a cluster. Obviously, every planet and, you know, every zodiac has a cluster of energies that it rules, you know, a cluster of body parts that it rules and so on and so forth. Just like you said, you can connect just about everything together. The more you learn, all the systems fall into one basic conglomerate of knowledge. But since we're mostly talking astrology today, um, I'll probably use mostly astrology related terms. But I did want to, you know, give a preface as to why I use the sidereal system and not the tropical the one thing that's really important to note is that when you're actually looking at the aspects in your chart, that's the way the planets face each other, the way the heaven was shaped when you were born. It's the same whether you run it over a tropical chart or a sidereal chart. Those relationships to the planets are the same. It's just where they're going to fall in the chart will show you where the activities, where the areas of life, those activities are going to manifest. So, when you're looking at a chart and you see the, the the relationship of the planets, if you shift the dial and you move things into different houses of zodiacs, it flavors your life in different ways. So the relationship with the planets stays the same, but affects different areas of life. And that's why it's important to like, if you're going to get into astrology, my opinion is run as many charts as you possibly can and look at them all. And what will happen is your intuition will start to kick in and you'll be able to like feel what's right what feels more balanced, the way that your mind connects to the chart, your ability to use your intuition for your client or for your person, or even for yourself, if you're reading just for your own personal reason. But it's about connecting more than anything. Even a tropical chart can get great results if the intuition of the reader is really strong. Because, you know, there's going to be mistakes in every chart. There's no specific science to it. It's more of a pseudoscience, you know, according to the world out there of science. Um, but people who are really, really into astrology understand how it works. It's just so detailed. Like subjective science more than pseudoscience. And then if you really yeah. look into the world of science deeply, and especially the quantum physics world, you realize, oh, wait, all science is subjective science. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And really, if you think about it, too, a lot of the science that we've had, uh, you know, 100 years ago, we couldn't explain with with science. And so they called it pseudoscience. But now it's science because they can explain it. They have technology to measure things we couldn't measure 100, 200 years ago. So what may be considered as pseudoscience today will eventually be able to have some kind of measurement system that allows us to have an absolute perfect and exact measurement. So until then, what we have are the systems that were developed thousands of years ago by people who spent their entire lives focusing on this stuff. Back then, people didn't have TV to watch, right? So looking up into the stars was actually pretty common thing back then all the time that there wasn't TVs forever and ever. And so what, right. what we get with anything sort of that it ends up being mainstream is usually what's happened is it's been prepackaged and sold back to us when in reality it was something we used to already have for ourselves. And in the case of modern day oracles, if you will, what we've got is the mm-hmm. media. And to access the media, first you have to get one of their uh, magic black boxes that projects their faces on the screen and tells you this is the news today and that's our oracle mm-hmm. for most people when before you used to need nothing but your own two eyes to connect up and look out and and feel the connection within definitely definitely you know it's kind of like uh we've been redirected our minds have been redirected by others so i like that I really appreciate what your podcast does and, and gets people to reconnect to themselves, go back inward and, and find where their source is. You know, the, the world's out there grabbing for your attention constantly, trying to distract your mind. And it's really hard to focus on yourself if you're, your head's buried in distractions all day long. So the, rather than, than divination being a distraction, it's a focus tool. So it's like the opposite. It's taking you inward, but yet connecting outward at the same time. 
So basically the way that we look at a chart is it looks like a big pie chart with wheels and, and the inner wheel is the numbers one through 12. And those numbers are the houses of the Zodiac and each house represents an area of life. Um, it rules, you know, a cluster of circumstances, like it begins and goes in an order of kind of when you're born and you become aware and you start learning about material resources and communications, you learn who you are and, and you go around the chart. And as you go up in number, the houses in the higher heavens or are more um, abstract things in life, you know, things that you work towards, towards the end of your life, friends, family, in the beginning of life, it's more about awareness. So the, the, the order of the houses are kind of made in order of the way a human mind develops. And it's really cool to see that. So you can actually literally see sometimes as you go around the, the wheel of the houses, your life develop in order and you can see what parts of your, of your life are blossoming. Like when that planet becomes illuminated, it's really cool to watch. So you look at the Zodiac as the outer wheel and the Zodiacs on the outside are kind of the lens at how you view the circumstances in that house. So for example, if the third house is a house of communications, um, yours has Virgo in it. And so Virgo sitting in the house of communications would give you the lens of an analytical thinker, someone who learns in an analytical, analytical, critical and compartmentalized way, a, a kind of a scribe, someone who takes really good notes, someone who keeps good records because those are all Virgo traits. So when it comes to communications, you've got the scribe in your house of communications. So you're going to be really good with information. And if you were to have, for example, Leo in the third house instead of Virgo, you be, you might be more of a, I want the spotlight on me kind of communicator and want to be a speaker giving, um, you know, inspirational speeches, but you might not be so good with information. So it just depends on where your Zodiac flavors that house. So, um, that being said, we're going to go around and kind of just give a little bit of insight as to how these uh, zodiacs will flavor the the way that the houses are situated here and what planets fall into your chart. Now, the planet will fall into the wedges. And, you know, there's cadent houses and there's angular houses. And, and the way that they are situated on the wheel, some of them have more power than others. Some of them are more important than others. But wherever you have the planet sitting in your chart, those are the areas you're going to see the most emphasis in your life, the most concern, the most triumph, and the most struggle. And then, of course, when you see the aspects in the middle, there's a bunch of red lines and blue lines generally in the middle. That's the way the, the planets communicate one to another within those houses. So I hope that that was a clear explanation as to how a chart is basically viewed overall. So your ascendant is your rising sign. And that is what the horizon looks like at the time of your birth. Literally, this is a snapshot of the heavens as you were born. So the ascendant would have been on the horizon. Cancer was on the horizon during your birth. And as you see here, you don't really have a lot of planetary activity here in your first house. You do have the south node. And in karmic or Vedic astrology, um, when they're talking about past lives, we look at the south node. And the north node, the north node is the karma that you bring with you to this life from your last life that you have to like pay back in order to balance your last life with, with the new one. Now let's talk a little about Chiron. It looks like the key, it's an asteroid. In mythology, Chiron was a centaur that healed people. He made them immortal. He healed them of their ailments and made them perfect. And Hades didn't like that because he wanted a steady stream of, hell, of, of souls coming down to hell. So he complained to Zeus about it. But before he took it to Zeus, he tried to, to poison Chiron and dip some... Uh, I guess he did it in Medusa's blood or something like that and shot him with a poison arrow. It didn't kill Chiron because he's an immortal, but it made him, oh, so sick. So here he's this healer, but he's sick and he's healing other people. So the wounded healer comes to mind when you think Chiron. Eventually, Hades complained hard enough that both uh, Zeus took him out with a lightning bolt and put him in the sky as an asteroid. And that's how the story goes to some degree. But um, basically what, what you find is where Chiron is where you're hurt, but you also heal. One of the cool things about this is these, these aspects are part of all of us in some capacity or another. You can hear about someone mm -hmm. else's chart and understand them better because you're connecting to things about yourself. It's just like mm -hmm. furniture in the room is moved around uh, to different places for different people. But as I was saying, it's just really un, an, a surreal experience to have all this laid out for me in a methodical way because it actually it's truly healing just to do it because I'm actually remembering things about childhood and about 
different parts of my life with a different perspective too, with my, my highest intentions and my, um, you know, a real accurate look at myself while I'm remembering mm-hmm. stuff. It's, it's very right. psychologically mending, I would say. Very much. And, you know, whenever I read a chart, I really try to empower people and I don't judge people anymore. Now that I started looking at these charts, I'm just like, wow, I wouldn't want that, you know, or whoa, that's a hard trial or what a cool superpower. Everyone is different. No charts the same. Um, but, you know, that being said, an natal chart is basically just a chart that shows your personality traits, your potentials in life, areas you're going to see a huge focus in. But you also have to consider those stars, those stars don't stay still. They're not going to stay that shape forever. That was the flash of moment you were born. The transiting planets still affect you, but your natal chart is quite literally the imprint of your ego. It's who you are. It's who your life mission is. And, and you only have one birth moment. You think about it too, even the conception moment. And when the sperm goes into the egg, a flash of light happens. So something else happens when you're born. The moment you're disconnected from your mother and the cord is cut, that's actually when you're supposed to, um, you know, frame the time for your birth is the moment you're separated from your mother. That's the moment you become an individual in the world, but yet you're still part of the mass body, you know, the mass mind, the universal mind. So it's finding yourself and your individual mission within that greater scope and but this is an empowering tool for that you know you can see things about yourself that like oh that's why I'm that way and now you don't you know it's like you don't feel so bad about those things anymore you realize that that's just who you are those are the things you're supposed to experience to become the next level of you so speaking of the next level of you we're going to look at your 2018 solar return and this is a form of predictive astrology so this is where divination is can, can be fun using astrology is looking at a peek into your future. Let's see where the planets are going to be this year. So now every year that you're born, the sun returns to its natal position and that's called a solar return. It returns to your natal position. And every birthday? year that happens, it's your birthday. Exactly. So on your birthday, you get a new flash chart and that chart kind of shows you what your year is going to be like. You'll see major trends. You can also look at your daily. You can look at a horary and something that happens literally at a moment in, in something intense happens and you run the chart on that time, you'll see it in the chart. I guarantee you every time. It's so cool the way, like, it's like the numbers trickling down on the screen in front of you right here on this dial. Tell me about some mm-hmm. of that people have found out that they were trying to find out through looking at a chart for that day or for their solar chart. Because I remember you were telling me stories about like helping people find everything from keys to Mm -hmm. relationship advice. Okay. Well, for example, um, a lot of times the clients that I get are word of mouth and they don't know me, you know, or they've seen a class that I've taught somewhere and they'll, they'll contact me and want a personal reading. And I don't know these people, but I read what I see and I'll say, is this accurate for what's going on right now? And they'll be floored because I've just, basically uncovered their secrets that no one else should know. Um, One example, I had a client call and she said, I just need some advice right now. And I said, well, I can look at your chart right now and think I can see that you're thinking about having an affair. And she was so floored because she told nobody she'd been seeing this man on the side um, and no one knew about it. (laughs) And I said, and you would really like to have an experience with this man, but I'm going to tell you right now that it's a transit and the transit is temporary and it's really intense. And here's your options. So here's how astrology can help. And this is how I helped this client with it. Because of the way that her chart was aligned, I could see that her marriage was in trouble and that she had this other guy on the side that she was really, really into. And I said, now weigh out your options and consider that this is a temporary transit. This is going to test your relationship. Either you can approach your guy and ask to open up the marriage and just be honest about your desires, or you can cheat and do the dishonest thing, which I don't recommend, you know. Um, you know, I recommended to her to be honest with who she is and to go to her husband. The worst thing that could happen is they have a divorce. And that's exactly what happened. She went to him. She asked, um, hey, you know, is is this something we should do? Uh, and he wasn't into it. So they split up and she ended up seeing this other guy, you know, but it was in her chart. She just wanted to know that she wasn't going crazy. She was literally feeling those transits. But that's so amazing because if you ever look back in your own relationship times of trouble, what always mm-hmm. exacerbates things and makes things into a really traumatic events is when we just aren't honest with each other about what it is that exactly. we want and what it is that might have changed. 
And it mm-hmm. sounds like, I mean, I, I don't know, but it sounds like it was probably a more amicable split because of that honesty than if there had been some sort of cheating happened and then someone found out exactly or if the person just Mm -hmm. never spoke up and then never pursued this other guy either and just sort of held Mm -hmm. that exactly and astrology gives you the ability to look at the situation from a different perspective because you're seeing it right there in front of you the stars don't lie hey this is happening in your life now here's your options here's how to deal with this situation and you look at the transit you look at the positions in between you see those red lines those blue lines the trines, the squares, so that's going to tell you where the challenges are and that's going to tell you how to solve the problem. So we look at the chart to see how to solve the problem, how to best apply your energy to get through it with the least amount of damage, how to positively use those planets to transmute your life, to transform your life into a better life instead of going through so much pain. So it's like having a roadmap. And if you're planning a trip, it's so much better to have a GPS that's updated with all the road work than getting stuck in traffic for four hours. So I look at it as this. It's a roadmap that saves you a heck of a lot of traffic. So <laughs> this, is, this is this is trip planning. Your life is a journey. You might as well enjoy it. And wouldn't you rather be smelling flowers in a scenic route than stuck in traffic smelling someone's exhaust? And then look at it too. Anything in life that you can prepare for, it's always worth mm-hmm. doing the preparation. So like there's a little bit of upfront work on maybe on an annual Mm -hmm. basis, you look at your solar chart and really think about it and maybe spend a whole day or a couple of days Mm -hmm. mulling it over. uh, And that all that is going to reinforce you throughout the rest of the the year as you're going through the experiences and you'll be able to remind yourself, Oh, there's this transit happening or, or whatever. And then you're not sort of so, you know, cause that's one of the things that totally sidelines anyone, especially empathic people is thoughts come in or these outside influences come in and we can't separate them from our true imperial self. And we think that we are the mercy. And your type of empath would definitely have that kind of problem I've seen in your chart. Now there are intuitive empaths, people who are empathic on a ninth house level, they see and know people and understand people, but from a non-emotional level, it's more of a, I know where my mind separates from yours and my feelings separate from yours. It's a different kind of empath, but there are multiple kinds. And your particular type of empath power is somebody who feels so intensely everything around them. Yeah. Well, one of your things like your, your chart shows to develop yourself in your career and in your reputation. And that's one of the things you can help use to overcome that with. You can also use your intuitive resources in your second house, but it shows here using your career to um, fix that in your life or to find how to cope with it. And well, I think you're already on that path. Totally the case because you know, once I started doing the podcast, it was as if someone took an arrow out of my shoulder that had been piercing me for a decade and that I could, had never pulled out. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm, exactly. it's like, yeah, I'm not actually saving the world or the universe just by making a podcast, but it's, it fucking feels like it. I know that's so, yeah. so weird and like kind of egotistical, but it's my world uh-huh. that I'm talking about. And the thing it is, film it is. You follow your vocation is Definitely. Mm-hmm. You, that's where you get that healing bomb. You're like putting the bomb back on every time you go out there. And, and um, exactly. <laughs> beautiful. Do you have any other final questions about these charts? And, you know, I hope that they give you a really good idea of what a basic natal chart and a basic solar return. So the difference between, you know, your personal reading and then a predictive reading. And they do just give you guidance, let you know you're on the right track. And if you have an issue in your life, you can say, gosh, I'm having an issue here. How can I fix it? You can go look at those those planets. What planet is connected to the planet that's causing you misery? Find out what malefic is causing the problem and then see if there's a, a positive or benefic planet connected there somewhere that you can actually look towards and you can find where your superpowers are at, the best places to put your energies. And so things will, you know, they'll be less painful. They'll be more beneficial. So it's like, you know, just taking that, that, that pep good food and putting it in your body instead of junk food, you're still going to get things done, but get twice as much done when you're healthy. And so your charts give you an opportunity to navigate this life with precision. And I wish you the very best of luck in your show and, and all the opportunities coming to you this year. Well, thank you really. And thank you for the reading and thank you for being a type of astrologer that realizes that a loving perspective is one that recognizes potentials and uplifts potentials and doesn't judge them mm-hmm. or especially doesn't define somebody or something as just one thing. It's all about looking at the possibilities. That's what being an artist is about. And that's what 
our lives are. Our lives are the work of art and the birth time is sort of like the material we're using or the canvas of the year or, you know, it's what we've got to work with, but it's not just one thing. It's a medium that we're working through. So. Right. It's good to know that there's someone out there like you that is so, so deeply knowledgeable about it that can actually help someone see the possibilities. I think what's so amazing about it is that like for me uh, to use myself as an example, as we have been, looking at my solar chart and seeing, oh, there's not a lot of money being made this year, but there's all these other positive things going on here, here, and here. For me, I could be thinking, oh, I could have spent the next six months thinking, why am I not making very much money? I'm working so damn hard. And I'm Mm -hmm. focused on that one thing. And that's why I don't see how much other development is going on. But when I look at it as a whole here, it it totally Mm -hmm. takes the shift, shifts the focus off of, what is kind of a difficult aspect and shows me how I'm actually in abundance. (laughs) Right. And there is an abundance in your chart. See, a lot of people, that's the thing is they look at other people. Well, you got all this money going for you right now. Yeah. But you know, what are they having very many experiences? Are they rich in culture? Being rich doesn't mean money. And people, people look at the world's terms of rich and people always think it needs money and, and, you know, like having a lot of things, but resources are not always tangible you know, knowledge can be, can make you rich and and you're going to have a knowledge rich and experience rich, a culture rich year, a spiritually rich year. And, and a lot of people lack that in their lives. So, you know, where they may be coveting your experiences and they have all the money in the world, but can't be happy with it. So you just embrace where the universe is giving you the gold and go for it. Yeah. And the real gold is within, right? As we were saying before, it Mm -hmm. can't take anything that you make with you physically it's just what what has it taught you in the making of it and what is you know how has it shaped you through the teaching and that's what you take with you and that's right yeah that's i think why i think what i I don't know just to get a little metaphysical and speculate here like why is there sort of a personality profile that seems burned in from that initial flash of light of conception or whatever point it happens birth coming through the the birth portal you know what, mm-hmm. what? Perhaps we are uh, in our spiritual fullness somehow unchanging outside of time. The part of us that is moving into these physical bodies, because there's no time and space, there's no moment in which to act, and therefore there's no change occurring. It's sort of just a pleroma and all that is what it is. So right. whatever you have that coming into the physical reality, what it is when it comes in is what. That's what it ha- that's what you have to work with, and that's what you're changing. Mm-hmm. So I think this is something I've always intuited is that not only is the moment of birth important to determine your life, but the moment of death and the way that you die, the, the consciousness mm-hmm. out of here is exactly what you're bringing back with you if you come back. There's no mm-hmm. you know you're not going to evolve in the spiritual side of things. So it's really important to see the the journey of potential that our charts have for us, so we can start looking for ways to maximize that because we, you know, our strengths and weaknesses aren't just going to go anywhere unless we do something about it. Right. Exactly. So cool. I I really enjoyed this talk on astrology and I would love to talk a little bit about the magic festival. That would be great. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what we can go with for the, uh, for the next several minutes that we run ourselves out of time. Okay, well, we're really happy that you're going to be there, too. Um, you know, some of the opportunities mentioned in this chart as well, I can see them, you know, coming with uh, this opportunity that we're having. Um, the festival is called the Gathering Mountain, and it's in uh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. So if you're anywhere within the region, and there are people coming all the way from Wichita, Kansas, Nevada, Texas, people from all over are coming to this event. We have a headliner coming all the way from Paro, Nevada the imperator of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a Rosicrucian mystery school, and the Chancellorian as well. They'll be there talking about magic, spell work, ritual magic. They're, they're really, really wonderful people to, to get to know and to talk to. Um, they have a vast amount of knowledge to share. You'll have an opportunity possibly to talk to them and maybe get them on your show. We'll have magicians. We have these Cherokee magicians coming from Oklahoma that keep the ways of the Cherokee alive and they do a lot of illusion magic. Like they take a, there's one of the things they do in this show where they take a, a handful of dust 
dirt and throw it up in the air and it becomes swarming moss or, you know, a drawing of a snake becomes a real snake off of, off the page. So we have a a hypnotist going to be there doing hypnotism, you know, group hypnotism, your feet are glued to the floor, you know, like a really wide range of fun, different modalities of magic and intuition. We're going to have psychics there, tarot card readers, also some fandoms, you know, so your favorite wizards from your favorite book, you know, characters, People will be in cosplay. So it's a mix of fandom fun with something real, something really tangibly spiritual. I say tangibly, but magic's so real, you can feel it, taste it, see it, smell it, and be it. So the the festival is called the Gathering Mountain Festival of Magic and Lore. You can find it on social media by going to Facebook and just typing in Gathering Mountain Festival of Magic. Follow the event, watch the event, click going. Tickets are on sale now. There's going to be some pretty interesting people to meet, some really unique things to see and experience, and and you'll be there. So, you know, get a chance to meet you and meet the voice behind the show. Oh, yeah, that's going to be one of my first events as, you know, not as just a participant wandering around, <laughs> but I'll mm-hmm. actually be more established uh, there for people to come and find yeah. me. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I hope to see a lot of young wizardlings out there. Because definitely, it really doesn't matter whether you think you're magic or not. You're doing magic all the time. Because mm-hmm. how, I mean, you can. I'd love to hear a definition of magic from you if you've got one that's different than this. But I'm thinking magic is just anything that you do, whether it's a technique or a, mm-hmm. a mental thought to bring about a shift of consciousness in yourself for the positive. Mm-hmm. Then you've done magic. Exactly. And every part, every every person's chart has some kind of magic in it. It's different for everyone. Like we mentioned earlier, um, I can tell that you have clairsentient gifts. You're, you're an empath, you know, or you feel things. I'm not much of a feeler. I'm a claircognizant. I just know things, you know, information comes into my mind when I need it. Numbers. Sometimes there've been times where salesmen would try to come to my house and get through a sales pitch. And they usually have a lot of hard math in there and boom, my math, my, my mind will just go like one time the salesman was at our house and I said, $53,9280 or something like that. He's like, that's within $10 of this. How did you do that? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so we all have different that's abilities. Yeah. The clear thing you, you, is weird because I'll sometimes like make eye contact with some stranger from 50 feet away. And I, occasionally someone will have such a strong like inner inner fear or something that when I mm-hmm. hit their, when my eyes hit theirs just randomly out in the middle of nowhere I'm just like oh like I just all of a sudden feel really weird <laughs> and like uh, uh-huh. you know, other times it can be totally different feelings good feelings mm-hmm. and stuff. but yeah that's that used yeah. to scare the shit out of me <laughs> and now I just send them love Exactly. Because, you know, we all reflect and, and you're beginning to understand your own power. And instead of allowing other people to affect you through your power, you're using your power to affect others. And that's really awesome. And in a positive way, too, because, you know, you you do definitely have a really good energy about you. And it's, it's a pleasure to know you. So, oh, and the, the event, too, is in September 14th, 15th and 16th. I guess dates are kind of important, but that with the uh, show notes there's going to be links to your uh, event page okay and, perfect um, i really do want to see people out there i think that i've never been to an event like this before as far as i know and it's I, the first of its kind in our region that i know of i think that it's so much more constructive than any a lot of the other sort of occult and paranormal topics that people get together over it is because you, you really get to the core of human psychology when you start trying to deal with magic because whether you are learning from a Jungian path and the archetypes or you start, you're just learning symbolism and implementing symbolism into your own changes of consciousness through a ritualized way. It's Mm -hmm. it's the thing you're learning about, as we were saying before, it's a whole bunch of different facets of the same consciousness that has particular mechanics and there's an anatomy to it. And it's just about uh, finding a language for yourself to to be able to understand that anatomy more and more and therefore get more right. of what you want in life and less of what you don't. Definitely. Well, thank you for talking about astrology with me. I do have some things I've got to get to. I have kept you over time. Thank you so much for coming on. I, uh, I was having so much fun. I was not paying attention to that. <laughs> oh, we could talk astrology all day or any kind of yeah divination tools or whatever. I just It's great. I, well, if you can do that. Come to our festival and, and we can talk for hours about all kinds of cool things. 
Yeah, go to the festival and meet up with Desiree. Find me out there. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. And and I'd love to have you back on sometime when the stars align and it's good for both of us. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, this happened today despite retrogrades and uh, malefic transits about communication and all. <laughs> right. Cool. Well, thanks, Chance. I appreciate it. Namaste. That's it for our interview with High Astromancer Desiree Fultz. I just made that title up. <laughs> I think it fits. What a magical meeting of the minds it was. I'm so glad we were able to make this episode happen after our chance meeting at a metaphysical fair a few months back. You may have noticed a bit of a sound quality dip after the first few minutes at the beginning, but that was due to Desiree's internet connection problems. Maybe connected to some malefic transits, who knows? <laughs> But I am exceedingly, exceedingly glad that you stuck it out to the end and got to hear all about the Gathering Mountain Festival of Magic and Lore. It would be so, so sweet to meet some of you in Meet Space and talk about magic in September, so check out the show notes for links to the event for more information if you are possibly interested in coming to Arkansas. Also in the notes, you will see a link to the music I played in this episode by a producer called Council of One spectacularly epic sci-fi ambient tunes and more than that really it's all over this guy's page i hope you go show us some love it's great lastly if you're not already a plus subscriber to interverse remember you can sign up to get the full episode extensions early access to podcasts and more by going to patreon.com forward slash interverse and in this episode there's a particularly unique extension because we go over my birth chart and solar 2018 charts at length while also breaking down some of the concepts of astrology that help us to intuit the inferences we get from studying horoscopes. And there's a pretty large and always growing archive of previously recorded plus episodes that you can find by subscribing as well. And as it turns out, Desiree's reading was profoundly accurate and she definitely described things about me that she wouldn't have known from our small amounts of previous contact. In particular, it was very interesting that she had some possible evidence of traits in my previous lives and accurate descriptions of my own inner way of interpreting psychic information. I don't know anything about my previous lives, so this is the first time I've ever even heard someone maybe like take a stab at what a previous life was like. I've never had any experiences relating to that. But we all have superpowers, that I do know, in the, these lives. Sometimes we don't recognize them as such because we just assume everyone experiences the world in the exact same way as we do. But that's not really how it is. Some of us are a more gut feeling based intuitive empathy like me and others get little movies playing in their head of precognitive information. But we all have extra sensory abilities and can develop them with intention and attention. And in fact, the time I met Desiree, she actually showed me my own psychic intuition with a demo. She had on her table a set of tarot cards with just the major arcana pulled out. They were super interesting looking. I'd never seen this deck before and I found out she actually created her own because she's such a skilled artist and she wanted to. She had me mentally select one card out of the 22 and instructed me not to touch it or look at it or give it away at all. Then we proceeded to shuffle and cut the deck into a small stack or two, I think three stacks, and she had me think about my card and pick one stack at a time and then keep cutting it down. To the end, there was like three choices in front of me that had not yet been eliminated. She told me to pick one and I did and it was the card I'd been thinking about, which was number one, the magician. So statistically, one in 22 odds aren't that special, I guess, but that's the sort of thing that makes magic what it is, I think. There's almost always a little margin for doubt like th there could have been something non-magical going on. Most people use that to label everything strange that happens as a coincidence, which I think is equally silly. Anyway, it certainly would have needed to be a huge series of improbable coincidences for Desiree to get so many things correct about me in her chart reading. And that's one of the cool things about astrology is, yeah, it's interpreted, but the information 
is there for both the reader and the subjects. It's the same information. And I could pretty much follow what she was saying from my own understanding of planetary rulers and things. I mean, I don't have deep, as deep an understanding as her by any means, but it does look like an accurate soul map of sorts, and maybe it would potentially benefit anybody that looked at their own chart. So once more, I'll remind you that if you want to hear about my charts being read by Desiree, subscribe to Plus. And also, I have a few new members to thank for joining in July. Ethan Nichols, who was also our last guest on the show, is now a Plus member. Thanks, Ethan, for a great chat. And I look forward to seeing what you're publishing on pa Patreon as a subscriber to you, too. And also, we have Matt Brake and Pablo Zambrano. Thanks, guys, for supporting the show with your energy. And please get in touch if you have any guest suggestions or feedback or just want to say hey. I am extremely grateful for all our subscribers, but also for everyone that checks out the free show. If you don't have the spare funds to pledge a monthly donation, you can always help out the podcast by sharing it with a friend or by dropping a five-star review on the iTunes podcast app. You can also find Interverse on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube, which is a lot of places. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked I got it on Spotify just recently. So check that out if you like to listen to things on there. And I'll depart by saying, I hope you explore some form of divination or intuitive practices if that's not something you've ever looked into before. What it looks like for you may be totally different than someone else, and that is okay, that's actually correct. Just taking a look at sidereal astrology or the tarot won't mean you have to be committed to those things for all eternity. They may end up just being stepping stones to learning things about yourself you never could have imagined and other forms of intuition practices that are beyond what even I even know about or that anyone else knows about. That's kind of the point of life, if you ask me, is to find ways to consciously direct our eternal flow of changes towards the ideal template that we're constantly recreating in our imaginations. So thanks for listening. I really love you guys. And until next time, remember to look up every once in a while. And I hope to see you at the Gathering Mountain in September. September.